गुड इवनिंग भवेद Let the student come. We'll start with the class. Okay, right? Okay. गुड इवनिंग रविशा गुड इवनिंग नित्या Start of the class. The next few minutes, okay. Good evening, Hitesh. I was going through uh, the test marks. Actually, you know, have we gone through the? Yeah. So I think few people have given Samaksh uh, and other students have gone through the uh, the Excel the marks uh, you people have obtained. So few students have not given the exam. Samaksh, you have given the exam. Nitya, you have given the exam. Ritesh, yes, you have given the exam, right? Good. You did 83 correct, isn't it, Ritesh? You did 83 correct, right, Ritesh? No, what about the math section? Let's take the math section, right? Math section, you have correct attempted only 11 questions to me. You have attempted only 11 questions, Ritesh. I think it was a very easy paper here. It's not very tough. Why you have done wrong? Why you attempted? You didn't get time or what? What was the reason behind the show? What was the reason? Oh, you have to go. Okay, okay, okay. Fine, fine, fine. Himank also did good. Himank, uh, he got 198, right? I mean, it was good. 27 uh, maths. You have attempted 27 questions. 17 correct answers, right, Himank? That's good, yeah. Good, fine. 
I think uh, Aryan also is the Samach you have done. What what happened to you, Samach? You scored 153, right? So maths you have attended 30 and 22 correct. It was it was it was no no. I'm talking about the full length test, three hours exam. Yes, I'm talking about the full length test, three hour exam. I think it was it was good. So much as a whole, your performance is good, right? You have attempted 29, 25, 7 questions you did wrong. Is it? Okay. Fine. So I think there's a there's a need of uh, sir, how much you scored? I mean uh, uh, Aryan scored. Let me let me Aryan give you one. Aryan you scored 174. Okay, you got 174, you have attended 30 questions, so 21 correct in maths. Right, Aryan? You did you attempted all the 30 questions and 21 correct. Fine. 21 correct. Right, Aryan? And uh, I think uh, we have Bhavil. Bhavil, you have given the exam? No, you have not given Bhavil. Oh, you have given, is it? So, OK, your, your score is also like a bit lesser, but you have attended 70 questions, right? OK, 70 questions. So maths, you have attended 27. So you did 16 correct, OK? Yes, you did 16 correct, fine. Ravisha, Ravisha, you have not given the exam. Ravisha, you have not given the exam, beta. You have not given the exam, sir. Given? Is it? Sir, I am not giving yours. Okay, can you send a mail? Your marks is not updated, beta. Okay, 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 okay. It is updated. Yeah, you scored one eighty one. Ravisha scored. You know, you you did sixty nine. You have attempted. Out of 90 questions, right? In maths, you have attended 19 questions. You did 16 correct. That's good. Very good. So you have attended 19 questions and 16 is correct. OK? Right, Ravisha. So fine. That's 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 a good thing, you know? That's really appreciable. OK? Nitya, you have not given the exam? Oh, you have given, yes. Nitya scored 200. Fine. That's great, Nitya. Very good. So 200, the maths you have attended 25 questions, did 25, 20 correct. That's great. Very good. Very good. That's really appreciated. Fine. Very nice. So I can see maths is quite, you know, it was an easy paper and uh, like it is appreciable. Okay. You did it. Good. That's nice. That's nice. Right. Good. So still there's a scope of improvement beta. This is the first test you have given. So we'll having We'll be having different series of tests now. It started with the test, so every uh, you know, maybe after fifteen days or twenty days, we'll have one test, right? So in IIT, may should we take tests while answering or leave the questions if you are not? So we should leave the questions if you are not able to understand. Answer, right? Right, Ivan. But there is a possibility that you should have, you know, I mean. There are three cases. If you know all the answers, that's fine. If you know 50, you know, 50 questions and 50% 50, 50 questions correct and 50% questions right, and there is a possibility of getting the you know the cutoff marks, then you can stop there. If you know 25% marks, 25 questions, right? 25 questions, 25 percent of the question paper. 75% you don't know and 25% will not fetch you the cutoff marks, then you can go for the tick thing, right? Okay, Mark? Otherwise, if you know 60% paper you have done correct, so 40% you can leave. No problem. Right? 60% is okay. 180, you know, out of 360, right? Isn't it? Out of 360, 140 is the cutoff. Average 130 between 130 and 140 is always a cut, right? Fine. So 
so i think nitya has scored the highest nitya has okay nitya ujwal has scored the highest right ujwal has done a wonderful job he scored 295 that's really we should clap for him come on right we should clap for him it's very nice very good very good nitya very nice he scored 295 yeah. great ujwal sorry ujwal scored 295 Mithun, you did a good job. You you attempted eighty eight questions and uh, really nice. And maths, you have attempted twenty eight questions and fifteen questions. You did correct. Really great, great, good, good. Yeah. Still, there's a scope of improvement. You did something maximum negative marking. This is Mithun. I'm talking about right. Mithun, I'm talking about you. You attempted twenty eight questions. I did fifteen correct. All the other are. wrong so you know there was a that's why you lost lo, you lost your marks okay fine so this is the you know uh, catalog i have of all the marks which has been given to me so i really appreciable that you people have given the uh, appreciate the fact that you have given the exam and uh, i can see this time there's attendance good attendance but still there are few people who have not given the exam right okay fine so what is the highest mark in maths okay let me tell you the highest mark in maths highest mark in maths is like 25 questions he has attempted so 25 400 100 bit okay fine Twenty-five questions he have attempted. So twenty-five into four hundred, five thirty questions he have attempted. Twenty-five wrong. Okay, and twenty-five correct. Sorry, and five wrong. So five into minus one minus one. So it comes out to be ninety-five then, right? Okay. So this is how it works. Okay, I will just I will in the meantime let me come to the point again where you want the marks. I have disclosed this marks now, but Ritesh, uh, Ritesh, Ritesh, Ritesh. I told you Ritesh actually I maybe somewhat Ritesh. Max, Max, you got you know. You did. You attempted seven, eleven questions. Did seven correct. So seven into four, twenty-eight minus four, twenty-four. Right. Which well, you did a great job, beta. Very good. Ritesh, is this clear, beta? This is fine. So there's a need of you know improvement. Whenever you give the test, make sure that you people don't go for any other work. Okay. Fine. Chal. Great. Good. so there was a uh, there was a test on sunday okay and uh, let's start with the class now so if there are any other queries you have regarding the test you can uh, you know inform them on the <clears throat> group or yeah mahesh was also mahesh is also joined great so there was a previous week test now there was a doubt Okay, there was a doubt in the previous week test. What is that? Uh, that uh, sequence and series test. Is it? Let me check. Okay, fine. So we have some doubts. Let's discuss those doubts first, right? Doubts from. the test so all the all the students have gone through the complex number videos <coughs> yes all the videos have we gone through okay great great so if you have any doubts in the videos or any anything we can discuss right no problem fine okay so i have a question now question number 26 from the last sunday's test we had right the previous week 
so the question was we need to find the largest interval we need to find the largest interval okay in the series 1 plus 1 plus x minus 1 plus x minus 1 whole square plus dot 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 infinity okay may be summed up as what so we need to find the largest interval for which the series may be summed up summed is what so my dear students there is a infinite series so when you talk about infinite series i r lies between minus 1 and 1 right right so much so what is r in this case this is x minus 1 upon 1 right which is x minus 1 fine so this is minus 1 less than x minus 1 Less than one, right? We take in this side, so this become minus one plus one, less than x. I take this, you know, I get one plus one, so this becomes zero less than x, less than two. This is what we have. Fine. Is this clear? So much is this fine, Mitun? Mitun, is this clear? Question number twenty-six. We need to find the largest interval of x. right we need to find the largest interval of x and this is an infinite gp beta in an infinite gp when you have an infinite gp right the common ratio is always i mean common ratio lies between minus 1 and 1 right i hope this is clear to everyone i have need to check all the things if go through the go through the answer sheet once you see what are the questions you did wrong okay yes so much is this clear everyone question number 26 is clear beta any doubts any one of you abhi ashwant Yes. Shall I go to the next question now? Question number twenty-seven. Beta, this is an infinite series, right? Okay. This is an infinite series, now, beta. This is a GP series. So if it is going to infinity, so we know that in infinite series, common ratio always lies between minus one and one, right? Okay, so much. So I have substituted in place of R x minus one. Okay. So if I substitute x minus one less than one, right? So what I can do, I can take two inequalities in this case. This is minus one, or I can take an inequality x minus one less than one. So x is greater than minus one plus one. So x is greater than zero, or I can write it as less than one plus one, which is less than two, right? So zero less than two. Fine. I think this is clear to everyone. All the students, please confirm if this is okay. This is a test. Last week test doubt. So I'm taking two questions. Sakshi, you have not given the test. You have given the test, Sakshi. Yeah, Sakshi, uh, you did good. You did good. I mean, uh, no, Sakshi. Yes, yeah, Sakshi has given the test. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, you did. You attempted seventy-four questions. So seventy-four questions you have attempted. Great, good. You are asking about the previous test questions. Okay, okay. This this paper last paper you have given, beta. Wait, just a minute. I I'll I'll, I'll I'll just come to that part. Don't worry. I will come to that part. Give me one minute, beta. Huh? Just a minute. I think I I thought maybe the last test we did, na? Okay. Give me one minute. Okay. Previous week test or monthly test? you are talking about the monthly test or week test
Okay, okay, I, I got it. I got it. Let me let me take that paper. Okay, just a minute, huh? Give me one minute. Fine. Give me one minute. I was thinking of solving that the other paper. Test number 10, right? Okay. I think we have discussed that question maybe. Test number 10. Wait, give me give me one minute, huh? I'll just Which question you are talking about, beta? Which one? Okay, the previous week test, question number? Question number, can you just confirm the question number so much once? Okay, last week, right? Okay, 26th, fine. So the question was, if SN is, one by six N, right, N, two N squared, plus 9n plus 13, right? This is what you have, now, And you have to find sigma r is equal to 1 to n tr. Fine. This is what you have. tr we need to find. So how can you find this part? Anyone can help me in this? If sn is given to us, this is the question, right? Fine. Everyone, is this clear? Okay. Now, we need to find sigma r is equal to 1 to n. So anyone did this question? Any idea? Any any anything you can, you know, any suggestion you can give? Yes. Yes. So Tn is what? Tn can be written as Sn minus Sn minus. Because Sn, we need to find Tn. We need to find Tn, right? So to find Tn, every time, anywhere, you know, such type of questions, if someone asks you, we need to find, suppose this, you know, uh, this question is Tr, right? So this is square root, but we need to find Tn. So how to find Tn if some 2n term is given? So Tn is always Sn minus Sn minus 1. You got my point? Fine, everyone. Okay. So that means if it is given n by 6, we have 2n squared. We have 9n plus 13, right? Minus n minus 1 divided by 6. This is 2n minus 1 whole square plus 9. This is n minus 1 plus 13 we have, right? This is what I can do, isn't it? Got it? We need to simplify this part. So how can you simplify? We can take n by 6, right? Tn squared. Got my point, better? We can simplify this, 2n squared. 
we can take n by 6 into 9n, right? We can take n by 6 into 13, okay? We can take n minus 1 divided by 6 into 2 into n minus 1 whole square, okay? Then we have minus 9 n minus 1 square divided by 6, this is 13 upon 6 n minus 1, okay? So we can, you know, if uh, you can, you can simplify this part, right? I think so much. Now we can solve it. Whatever the simplification will come, you can bring it in the form of TR. So whatever will come, this is basically TR, right? We'll get TR. You want to show? Everyone, can you give me a confirmation better? If TN is okay. Everyone, can you please confirm because it's a lengthy calculation, but I want you people to do it. Right? Everyone. Yes, sure, sure. Note it better. Come on. No problem. Yes, the end result will be TR better. Yes, absolutely. Better. Right, Ash? Just wrote, write it down. Come on. Written. So people can try this one now. Shall I go to the next one? 27th one? 27th. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Done beta. Shall I go to the next one? So much. Okay. Okay. Now there's a question, 27th question. Just have a look at it, 27th one. Everyone. It is given HN is equal to 1 plus 1 by 2 plus dot dot plus 1 by N, right? You need to find the sum of N terms. Right of the series, what is given? One square upon one square, right? This is what is given. One square upon one square. Then we have been given one square plus two square upon one square plus two square, right? Is it? Should be this given cube, no? Is it given cube, right? It is given cube, right? Cube, no? Okay. Very small. We have one square plus two square plus three square divided by one cube plus two cube plus three cube, right? This is what has been given, Anna. This is what is given here, right? So what is the unit term we have? So there are a few options we have. You can see here. What are the options we have? You can have the calculations. Right? We have no, it's once it should be Q here, otherwise the uh, it should be Q. Fine. Otherwise the sum will not come. Double summation for what? 
So everyone has the question paper, beta. It should be cube. I think there's a misprint, beta. Right. It should be cube. Fine. It should be cube. Otherwise, it will not. So there are four options we have. Four by three H N minus one. Four by three H N plus one by N. Four by three H N. Four by three H N minus two by three and divided by N plus one. Right. This is what you have. Good. This is what is given to us. Fine. So, anyone can give me any idea on this? It's basically a recurring, the reoccurring terms, right? Can you see that? So, T n will be somewhat like at the end, the nth term will be like you know, this will be like, isn't it? I mean, where the three comes, I think that there's a mistake so much, maybe. That is the there is a printing error, maybe that is right. Right, so much. That is the that is the error we have. Otherwise, two square, two square will be cancelled now. It will be cancelled. So what does it mean? It doesn't make sense, no? Isn't it? So maybe that that is why it is it has been it is confusing, right? Fine. Got it. I suppose this, this can be solved now, everyone. I have given you the hint. So we can get the nth term. Right, everyone? Okay. It's three. Oh, sorry, it's three cube. Fine. I think that 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 means so we need to check the question words. I think concept is same. Concept is same. Whatever the process of solving is this 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 is the way, right, Samaj? So if you come across this type of questions, you can do it like this. Aryan says it's a double summation. Yes, Aryan, it's a HN HN stands for like, say, if I say H2, it means 1 plus 1 by 2. If I say H3, it means 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3. Right, so much. Got my point. So for n number of terms, you know, the, the way of writing it is this. Hn is 1 by 2. No, harmonic, it is not mentioned, no, beta. It is not mentioned, right? There is no specific formula for this thing, no? Right? Yes, 27, the answer is D. Absolutely. Aryan, have you done this? How? The same way? Did the calculation? Other students, please give a try. Aryan, let me know how you have done it. What can be the sim simple points? Don't give the full answer, just give a logic. If you have done this. Other students, please try. Yeah, other students, please try. Mitun have a general doubt. What Mitun? What type of doubt you have, beta? Can I have a?
So how can you justify zero factorial is one? You can ask me in the uh, end, end of the class, Mitun, no problem. I will just explain you, right? So the concept of combination will come into picture, okay? Yes, Aryan, how we have done it, beta? Other students, please confirm how you have done it. Come on, let me know, everyone. Yes. You got, after simplification, you are getting this, beta? After simplification, you are getting this, right? Okay, after that, summation part. Yes. Okay. So, so much n n will be cancelled, this will be cancelled, right? This is 3, this is 2. So this is 2 into 2n plus 1, right? Divided by 3 into n plus 1, is it? We can write in this way. Can we? Fine. Uh, there's an n also. So in this case, what we can do, there is a 2 by 3 also, right? There are 2 by 3. That 2 by 3, where is this? Are in 2 by 3 is also there, right? That also you have to take care of, right? So we have 2n plus 1. This is sigma we are talking about, tn, right? So we need to separate the things. It's a very interesting one. We call it as partial fraction. We'll discuss this later on. This is 2 upon 3, okay? So 2n plus 1 can be written as n plus n plus 1. Fine, students? This is okay, everyone. Okay, this is how you can write it, fine. Yeah, got it. So two by three can be taken outside, okay? Right, and we have n divided by n into n plus one. This is one part, n plus one divided by n into n plus one, okay? This is cancelled, this is cancelled. So 2 upon 3, sigma 1 upon n plus 1 plus 1 upon n. Can you see that? So much? Yes, can I have a, can you people have a look at it? My dear students, can you have a look at it? If this is okay, everyone. Just have a look at it. I think we are coming to the answer now, right? Okay. So we need to find some of the series. So obviously, two by three, we can take separately, isn't it? We can write 1 by n, fine, fine, okay. Then I can take 2 by 3, sigma 1 upon n plus 1, fine. This is also it's a very, you know, important term we have. So I hope uh, this will come out somewhere in the fray, right? Just have a look at it. When you separate it, is something left out? Is something left out? Any calculations have been left out, beta? Just have a look at it. So much. Right. Now, this is actually, if you see, this is 1 by n. This is 1 by n, right? So if I take sigma 1 by n, so 1 by n is basically what? Hn, because if I put n is equal to 1 to n, right? So we get this one. Can you see that?
just Is this clear, everyone? Is this okay? No, what about the next part? Somewhat I'm getting two by three, two by three HN, right? Two by three sigma one upon N plus one, but I need to find this part. Is there any possibility that we can get it? Yes. Again, let's do the partial vector. We need to bring it in the form of HN. Yes. So what I can take, I can take 2 by 3 sigma n plus 1 minus n divided by n plus 1. Can you see that? This one. Or I can write it as 2 upon 3 sigma n plus 1 upon n plus 1. Right? Minus sigma n upon n plus 1. Okay, this is what we have. So this is cancelled, right? Is it? Right, everyone? Is this clear? I think we're getting something. And this so we can separate it, right? Okay. Right, everyone. So this is coming out to be 2 upon 3. And right? Isn't it? Just have a look at it. Just see the calculation. If it's, it is working, then just have a look at it later. Everyone is it coming out to be n into n divided n plus one. It's coming out to be n, right? Aryan, is the calculation going right? Everyone, wait us, just have a look at it. Which it's going well. Why not H and minus one? H and minus one? From where you'll get H and minus one later? So this is coming out to be two upon three. This is coming out to be 2 upon 3 n into n plus 1, right? Okay. Yes, the hn is given fine. I'm just writing it down better. This is hn what we have written. So everyone, are, every, all the students are with me. Now, are they giving their thoughts also in this question? Yes, let me know. Or simply I am giving the thought. Everyone is putting their... So how did the sum go away? Samakshay sir, can you give me the mic? No, okay, I will give you the mic. No worries, I will give you the mic. Now tell me one thing. Step number one, I will give you the mic. Samaksh, don't worry. This is step number two. This is step number three. Right. Fine. This is step number four. Right. This is step number five. This is step number six. Okay. 
this is step number seven. And this is, you know, step number eight, right? So everyone, can you just have a look at it? So much I'm coming to you, Vita. Yes, Aryan. Can you see the calculations, Vita? Can you have the calculation, please? Samaksh, which which step you are talking that there's a problem? Can you tell me? Which one? So step number eight, I have a problem. So much step number eight, actually I have taken that two by three thing, right? Okay. No, no, I have not taken any summation. I will just rub it up. Don't worry. Okay, I'll just rub this one. Two by three, one upon n plus one, right? This is what we have. Huh? Step no, but a step number seven. I have multiplied. See, one by n, one by n is left out. So one by n, two by three into sigma one by n is what? This part, h n. Got it? One by n is what? HN, na? I told you, no, this is HN which is given to us, right? Okay. And this N plus 1 is left out. So 2 by 3 sigma 1 by N plus 1. Fine. Okay. This is what we have. No, it, it yes, uh, you want me to write HN plus 1. See, whatever has been given now, we need to find because there is no need of HN minus 1. We need to find only HN, right? So that's why we're not going into HN minus 1. Okay. We're not going into HN minus 1. Right, so much? Fine, everyone. So we have 2 upon 3 sigma 1 upon N plus 1. Right. So we have two upon three. Okay. Two upon three. Sigma one. Because we need n plus one also. So how can you just go about that one plus one, n plus one? We have 2 upon 3 sigma n upon n plus 1, right? This is what we have. Fine. So this is coming out to be 2 upon 3 sigma 1 is in, right? And this is 2 upon 3. Again, we come to the same part. This is sigma n upon n plus 1. So again, I, I we need to do n plus 1 minus 1 plus n. Right? Okay. Now, just have a look at the steps and uh, hopefully things can be worked out. Just have a look at it. Everyone, so much. I want everyone to go through the steps and uh, do the calculations and check how the things can be worked out. Better, right? So T option is given the as the answer. So I I I, I suppose that you people, all people, give a try in this. Okay, just give a try. Fine. So let's, shall I go to the next part now? Samaksha, uh, I have given you the, you want me to do the whole sum. Will you try by yourself once? 
I've given you the lot many hints. Huh? Just go through it once. Just try. Again, you take a 1 plus 1 and minus 1. Then you substitute the values. Just check if things can be worked out. Right. All the students, please give me a confirmation. If you can go further, proceed to the next uh, this thing. Can you just give me a confirmation, Peter? Everyone, will you try? Yes. Let me know. All of you, please confirm. Okay, was well. So how to do such I uh, such lengthy question in J, which is. No, not necessarily this will come in the examination, but Again, there may be some questions. Always remember, if there are 30 questions, it doesn't mean that 30 questions will be of you know two minutes each, right? There may be some questions. There may be some questions which you can take three minutes, or there may be some questions which you will take 30 seconds, right? Always remember. It's not necessarily that algorithm or that calculation or that economics. You know, it's basically question bound. Fine. Right, so much. So it may happen that you have been given a question, but doesn't mean that you need to do it in one minute or two minutes on the specific time. There's no specificity because you have been given three hours. Right. Chemistry can be finished in one, you know, 45 minutes, say. Physics can be finished in 50 minutes. So you have around one hour, uh, 10, 20 minutes for, you know, maths. Okay. No, it's not a J advanced question. It's a very simple question. Just basically logical, you know, just uh, arrangement we are talking about. Okay. It's not J question. Once you know the concept, now J questions are also very easy. Don't worry. Okay. Right, Mitra? So nothing to worry as such. It doesn't make sense. I mean, if you know the concept, whatever questions, whatever types of questions you will be encountering, you know, uh, can be done. Fine. Okay, any other things you have, my dear students? Shall I go to your other doubts now, complex numbers or anything else? Or is this okay? Fine. Shall I give you some questions? What do you want to see? Complex number questions, do you want to solve today with me? Some more questions on complex numbers. There was a request last class. Everyone, please confirm. Okay, no, uh, let me, uh, you people decide then, let me know if uh, we should go about. Uh... Okay, Mitun, there was your doubt, let me clarify. NCR is equal to N factorial upon R factorial into N minus R factorial, right? This is what, wasn't it? Okay. So NCN is one, right? Is it? So this is one fact n factorial divided by n factorial, and this is n minus n factorial, isn't it? So this is cancelled, right? So this is one upon zero factorial, right? So one is equal to one upon zero factorial. So zero factorial is equal to one. This is how you prove it. Fine. Okay, my turn. Illustration nineteen we have right. Illustration 19 of complex numbers, is it? Illustration 19 of complex numbers, is it? Okay, let's do a question. Illustration 19, everyone, please have a look at it. Question number 19, illustration 19, we are talking about. If c square plus a square is equal to 
one. Then one plus C plus IS divided by one plus C minus IS, right? This is what you have, right? IS, one plus C plus IS and one plus C minus IS we have. is equal to what? Options are C plus IS, C minus IS, S plus IC beta, S minus IC. So let me, this is the question. Yes, let me know if people can solve it. Can you try everyone? How can you solve it beta? C square plus S square is equal to one, right? What can be the possibility? Anyone? Yes, Peter. So much. Everyone, can you just give a try, Peter? Everyone, please give me a, you know, I want everyone to try this question. Come on. Yes. Can everyone try this question, Peter? Yes, let me know. So rationalize. Is there any shortcut method we can solve here? Anything we can do? Any shortcut? C square plus A S square is equal to one, right? Yeah, we can. Yeah, I think it's it's again it's uh, we can take cos square theta plus sine square theta is equal to one, right? This is okay, huh? Fine, so much, right, Aryan? So that means C is cos theta, and this is sine theta, right? S is sine. Theta. So basically, if I substitute here, one plus cos theta plus iota sine theta, right? One plus cos theta minus iota sine theta, isn't it? So this can be written as two cos square theta by two plus two iota sine theta by two, right? Cos theta by two, isn't it? Or I can write it as two cos square theta by two minus iota two sine theta by two into cos theta by two, fine? Or I can write it as two cos theta by two can be taken common. This is cos theta by two plus iota sine theta by two, right? Or I can take it as two cos theta by two, and this is cos theta by two minus iota sine theta by two, right? Okay. Right, everyone? So we have been given e raised to the power i theta by two, niche e raised to the power minus i theta by two which becomes e raised to the power i theta, which is nothing but cos theta plus iota sine theta, right? Which is nothing but c plus iota s. What do you say? A is the answer, right? Right so much. I think this is also one way of doing it, right? And also we can use the conjugate method that what is given in the book. We can use the conjugate method also, right?
right everyone can i have a confirmation beta yes students please give me a confirmation if the logic is clear to you everyone yes bache right okay shall i go to the next part fine what was the next question what was the next illustration yes so much what was the next illustration beta 21 right okay 21 fine the imaginary part of z minus 1 e to the power minus i alpha plus z minus 1 raised to the power minus 1 e raised to the power i alpha is equal to 0 right fine if a mod of z minus 1 is equal to 2 argument of z minus 1 is equal to 2 alpha argument of z minus 1 is equal to alpha d is not right d is not fine okay so this is what is given to us this part and this part right so z minus okay you you give a try everyone yes yes let me let me give some time that's great good give a try everyone just give a try beta okay give a try come on so is the answer b no give it a try come on answer is not b yes answer is not b I'm going to solve this one.
So there's a mod of z minus one also in the picture, right? So we need to understand how to go about it. Yes, so much. Z minus one e raised to the power minus i alpha plus z minus one raised to the power minus e to the power i alpha is equal to zero. So imaginary part of this is zero. Imaginary part is zero. So what are the possible simplification we can do? That is very important for us now. Anything we can think about. Anything we can presume what we can take. Z minus one e to the power minus i alpha plus z minus one raised to the power minus one plus e to the power i alpha is equal to zero. No, shall I go to the next? I mean, let's discuss this question, is it? So we have imaginary of this plus imaginary of this. Let's understand this complex number first, right? Let's understand this one. So what exactly we are having? We have this plus this, right? So Z minus one. And one more thing is very important. And uh, that logic is any complex number, you know, can be written as e to the power i theta. Agreed? You can write in this way, isn't it? If we have z is equal to a plus iota b, right? 
Okay. So I can write in this way. Z is equal to R cos theta plus iota sine theta. Is this clear, Avisha? Fine. Or Z can be written as R e to the power i theta beta. Is this okay? Fine. Okay. So we can write it as Z mod of Z e to the power i theta, right? Fine. Okay. Now, this Z minus 1, okay, this Z minus 1, we can write it as mod of Z minus 1, e to the power mm. i, you no, know, you can take any, any number, say, let me take it as beta, we can take beta, right, fine. So if I take 1 upon z minus 1, this becomes 1 of mod z minus 1, right? This becomes e raised to the power i beta. Or we can write it as e raised to the power minus i beta divided by mod of z minus 1, right? This is how we can write it, fine. Okay, this is how it, it is written, fine. So I think this is clear to everyone. Is this fine? Clear? Every student, please give me a confirmation, beta. Yes. So much. Is this clear? Fine. Now. So that means Z minus 1 into E raised to the power minus I alpha can be written as mod of z minus 1 e raised to the power minus i alpha into i beta, right? Or mod of z minus 1 e raised to the power i, this is beta minus alpha, okay? Right? Similarly, if I talk about z minus 1 minus 1 e raised to the power i alpha, this is 1 upon z minus 1 e raised to the power i alpha this is e raised to the power i beta i alpha divided by mod of you know this is what we have right z minus 1 so mod of isn't it? we have z minus 1 right isn't it? So uh, this is e to the power i beta is also there. Fine. Okay. So this is mod of z minus. So you got my point, what I'm writing here. So 1 upon mod of z minus 1 e raised to the power minus. Right. So hopefully this is okay, everyone. Fine. Okay. So this can be written as mod of z minus 1 e raised to the power minus beta goes upward but there is always you know so e minus beta is always over right because we have written this part right so just this is the thing we need to understand can you see can you just have a look at it there's a there's a This is a plus alpha, so uh, I, this is beta minus alpha, right? I think this is clear, everyone, fine. Now what we can do, we can put it inside the bracket. So we have mod of Z minus one, right, fine. e to the power i beta minus alpha plus right 1 upon mod of z minus 1 e to the power i minus i beta minus alpha. Okay, this is what we have. 
and this is coming out to be zero. Okay. Now e to the power i beta minus alpha can be written as cos beta minus alpha plus iota sine beta minus alpha, right? Isn't it? Or e raised to the power minus i, this is beta minus alpha, can be written as cos beta minus alpha minus iota sine beta minus alpha. Okay. Fine, everyone. Clear? So this plus this, you know, can you see that? What are the things we can take common here? Right. We can substitute here. Is this clear so much? Is this okay? We can substitute the values. Imaginary of, we write mod of z minus 1, right? And there is a cos beta minus alpha, cos beta minus alpha. So we can take common. 1 plus 1 upon mod z minus 1, right? Okay. This is cos beta minus alpha, isn't it? Plus iota. We have mod of z minus 1 minus 1 upon mod z minus 1. This is always equal to 0. Again, this is sine beta minus alpha, right? So we have taken the common. Imaginary is 0 means what? This part is 0. You got my point. Okay. Up to this step, it is clear, everyone? Fine. Sorry. This is okay. Yes, Samaksh. Yes, everyone. Fine. So this part comes out to be z minus 1 minus mod 1 upon mod upon z minus 1 is equal to 0. And sine beta minus alpha is equal to how much? Zero, right? Okay. So sine beta minus alpha means we are talking about sine zero. So that means beta minus alpha is equal to zero. We have beta is equal to alpha, right? And here what we have? We have z minus one whole square minus one is equal to zero. Or I can write it as mod of z minus 1 square is equal to 0, right? Is this clear, everyone? Fine. Okay. Up to this step, it is clear. Sorry, z minus 1 is equal to 1. I'm sorry. This is 1. Fine. This is what we have. So what can be the argument then? Because you have been given z minus 1 whole square, right? Is equal to 1. Isn't it? z minus 1 whole square is equal to 1. So it will be always, you know, of the form theta minus alpha plus iota, you know, theta minus alpha form, right? So you can just have a look at it because this is given uh, 1, right? So mod will be always 1. And this is always, this can be a possibility, right? Z minus 1. So this is always beta is equal to alpha. Can you see that? I mean, Z minus 1 whole square. So I think, let me let me explain it again. But first of all, let me know if the thing is clear to you, everyone. Is this fine? Is this fine, everyone? Clear? Clear, everyone? Right. Okay. So this is only possible when you have beta and alpha same, right? 
So we can take argument of z to be alpha. Z minus one will be alpha, right? No, it's it's okay. I mean, z minus one we have, right? Let's see. We have uh, mod of z minus one is equal to two. No, it is not there. Right? We have, you know, argument of z minus one. No, it is not possible. It's given alpha, so it's fine. None. So argument of z minus one. No, my dear students, if I have z square is equal to one, right? See, let's let me give you a logic in this case, right? Z should be what? Cos theta plus iota sine theta, isn't it? It should be like this. Fine. Is this clear? So, what is the argument? Argument should be always. Argument should be. What is the argument? Argument is. Argument is. Argument is theta, right? Fine, right, Samaksh? So in this case, it is given beta is equal to alpha. So what is the argument, beta? What is the argument? Argument is alpha. Argument of z minus one is alpha, right? Right, Nitya? Yes, everyone. So I hope this is clear. So the logic I have given, I think that logic will help you in this, right? Okay. Fine. What was the next question, beta? Samaks, what was the next question? 23. Yeah, 23. Fine. Twenty-three question. Argument is less than zero. Then argument of minus z argument of z is equal to what? I have given the question now. A. Right. Is pi. B. Is minus pi. C. Is minus pi by 2. D. D. Is pi by 2. Right. This is what the question is on. Right. Argument is less than zero. So if I talk about the principal argument, where is the argument which is less than zero? Argument is less than zero. Question number 20, 24. Now, this is the question, right? Or other, what was the next? What was the question, beta? Is this the question we are talking about? Or anything else? Let me know, beta. This is also a doubt, right? Everyone, can you have a look at it and just let me know if you, people can try this one? Come on. Which I left 23, is it? Okay, 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 fine. I'll come to 23 also. Don't worry. Okay? Come to 23 also. Is the answer B, sir? 
yeah let me know why it is so why it is b why it is so anyone can help me out in this question come on let me know if people can help me out in this how it can be done yes okay so uh if i if you remember this is a property i told you argument of z1 minus argument of z2 is equal to what is equal to what argument of z1 divided by z2 right so argument of minus z upon z right so this is argument of minus 1 argument of minus 1 is what argument of the negative x axis right the points on the negative x axis isn't it we are talking about the argument of points on the negative x axis remember so what we have whenever we take this part we have minus 1 comma 0 isn't it so this is basically we are talking about 180 right remember so what do we have we have minus pi you remember yes there's an article in the there's an article in the module and i've also discussed in the videos so if all the points which are having on the negative x axis they will have the argument minus pi right samaksh right everyone is this clear no problem come on let me know if it is okay right now if i go for a general argument then this is theta and this is the third quadrant right so pi plus theta minus theta which is equal to pi right right avisha so I, this is okay everyone fine no problem is this clear okay So let's come to the 22 now, fine. 23 I left out, no? 23, okay. 23, right, Samash? 23. Okay. 23 is if z1 mod of z1 plus z2 is equal to mod of z1 plus mod of z2, right? Is possible if so there are four options A z2 is equal to z1 conjugate z2 is equal to 1 upon z1 argument of z1 is equal to argument of z2 okay and the d is mod of z1 is equal to mod of z2 This is what we have, fine? So everyone, can we have a look at it and just discuss this part? Come on, just try. Mod of Z1 plus mod, mod of Z1 plus Z2. Is equal to mod of Z1 plus mod of Z2 is possible if there are four conditions we have. If z2 is equal to z1 bar, z2 is equal to 1 by z, right? So what can be the possibilities?
Yeah. Option C, is it? Great. Other students, please confirm. Mod of Z1 plus mod of Z2 is equal to mod of Z1 plus mod of Z2 is possible if this and this. Anything shortcut, anything we can find out, any possibility by inspection we can do or any other way of, uh, you know, maybe doing it. Any one of you can give me a confirmation, please. My says B, so is it B? Okay. Z1 plus Z2, we need to separate it. That is the most important thing, right? I think we can divide it by Z2. Mod of Z2. Right. So this becomes mod of Z1 plus mod of Z2 divided by this is the property we know, right? And this is mod of Z1 divided by mod of Z2 plus mod of Z2 divided by mod of Z2. Fine. This is one. This comes out to be mod of Z1 plus Z2 plus one, this is mod of Z1 upon mod of Z2 plus one, right? Isn't it? Okay. So we can square it up, right? So no issues, right? So we know that mod of Z square is equal to Z, Z conjugate, right? Isn't it? So accordingly, or or there is a there is again a very interesting thing we know that mod of z to the power n can be written as mod of z to the power n this right. This also we can do fine. So I think that calculation can be done fine, right? Okay. Right, students? Is this okay, everyone? Okay. So I think these calculations can be done now. So, so if you can see that in the in the calculation, there is a part that real of z is equal to mod of z. Can you see that? Let me explain that part. So much after the calculation, we'll come out with real of z is equal to mod of z. Everyone, real of z is equal to mod of z, right? That means we are talking about a real number, right? We are talking about real of z is equal to mod of z. We are talking about a real of z mod of z. Fine. Yes, Samaksh, can you see that? Other students, if you go through the question once, the solution part, it is given real of z is equal to mod of z. Right, Samaksh? Everyone, Mitones, Aryan, I think Aryan has also done. OK. So real of, once you do the calculation, real of z1 is equal to 
z2 is mod of z1 upon z2 right what does it mean what does it mean so real of 2 is 2 right fine so we are talking about the complex numbers which are lying on the positive side of x axis right so 2 comma 0 3 comma 0 4 comma 0 right so what is the what is the argument of that argument of that is zero na whatever the points lying on the positive side of the x axis because argument is nothing but is the angle between you know because already the line x axis is there so and itself x axis line between x axis and it, itself it's always zero right on the on the positive side of the x axis isn't it so it always becomes zero right so that means we are talking about that if real of z is mod of this, so we have argument of z1 upon z2 is equal to 0, right? So if argument is 0, that means we are talking about argument of z1 minus argument of z2 is equal to 0, isn't it? Or we can write it as argument of z1 is equal to argument of z2. Is this clear, everyone? Fine. Clear? Right, Aryan. Right, everyone, better. Please confirm so that we move to the next question. Better once we once we square it now. See. Uh, Let's take it this way. So there's a step. Let me write z1 upon z2 plus 1 and z1 upon z2 plus 1. And this is the conjugate we are talking about, right? So this becomes z1 upon z2, z1 bar upon z2 bar plus 1 plus 2 z1 z bar and 2 z2 you know z1 z bar z2 z bar can you see that fine yes right so this part you can write in this way so this z1 z bar can be written as mod of z1 square isn't it this can be written as mod of z2 square, fine. Okay. Plus 1. You got my point? Then I have z1 upon z2 plus z1 bar upon z2 bar, right? Got it? Right, someone? Now, always remember z plus z bar is always always what twice of real of z you know how because if i take x plus iota y if i take x minus iota y this is cancelled so we have twice of real of z right because twice x is twice of real of x z right so much right everyone is this clear Fine. Okay. Chal. All the students who are present in the class now, is this clear? Shall we move to the next out? Everyone. Okay, Chal. right, Samaksh. So, what is the next doubt you have, Samaksh? Uh, any other students, whoever, and a few people have done this exercise, I said.
what about the last step last step is like now it is coming out as you know real part there is a the things will be cancelled now because i have taken this part right i substitute here right so much because i found out this part na i substitute so things will be cancelled you got my point so much fine let's come to the next cup what is the next doubt what is the next doubt Twenty ninth. Okay, twenty ninth. Alpha is equal to cos eight pi divided by eleven. Right? Iota sine eight pi divided by eleven. Okay. So we need to find the real part of alpha. Plus alpha square, alpha cube, alpha four, alpha five, equal to a. This is half b minus half c zero d nine. Okay, this is what alpha is equal to this. So, is 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 it is it? Uh, the roots of unity we are talking about eleven roots of unity we are talking about right everyone can you have a look at it ariel alpha is cos 8 pi upon 11 plus iota sin 8 pi by 11 right Okay, you have been given n th roots of unity, right? so basically we are talking about z to the power n is equal to 1 no no i am coming to the point don't worry if it is 1 raised to the power 1 by n if you remember what we have done we have written it as in complex number i 2 pi pi k divided by n right this is what we have written fine okay e raised to the power i 2 by k upon n right okay got my point so there are 8 pi so what are the possibilities we can have that is the main thing everyone just have a look at it we have alpha alpha square alpha cube alpha 5 alpha 4 alpha 5 so basically if we are talking about n11 if we are talking about n11 
that means we need 11 terms, right? One alpha, alpha square, alpha cube, like, you know, we go for alpha 10, right? Isn't it? N is 11. So we are talking about, you know, if it is 11, what does it mean? If it is 11, that means 11 roots, right? If N is, say, two, if it is in place of 11, it is 12. So this is 12 roots, right? Got it? So somewhat here we have, you know, that that relation we know. You got it? This is always zero. Sum of the nth roots of unity is always zero, right? 11 roots. Sum of the 11 roots is always zero, isn't it? Fine. Clear everyone? Is this okay? 1 plus 11 plus 11, 10 is equal to 0. That is what we are. But we need to find this part. So what is alpha to the power 10? And what is alpha? Let's understand this part. What is alpha and what is alpha to the power 10? This is i raised to the power, you know, 8 pi upon 11, right? So this is how much? e raised to the power i. Okay, this is uh, what can be alpha raised to the power 10 now? If I talk about real of alpha, if I talk about real of alpha raised to the power 10, how can we write it? What can be a possibility we can have? Real of alpha and real of alpha to the power 10, right? So basically we are talking about e raised to the power. Two k pi k divided by 11, right? Isn't it? So basically alpha to the power 10, I, so if it is alpha, let me take it in a very shortcut way. Let's understand this one, how it can be approached. Now using this, or I think that that is okay. That is also we can do. We can, can we have a, another way of doing it? Let's understand the other way. Can we make it as a GP type? Can I have a GP type, right, Samaj? Everyone, can I have a confirmation? This is also we can do what is book given in the book, but I was talking about a GP sort of thing. Is it a GP? Is it a GP, everyone? Can you please confirm? Other students, please confirm. Aryan, can we use this as a GP and I have a doubt. Yes, tell me. Tell me. Mithun. Yes, or sir, is it the is 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 it an root of it? sir? Uh, 
yeah yeah that that is there that is there obviously this is there so basically what happens you know see one is there right one can be written as cos zero right Arin? iota sine zero then what we can do we can add zero plus two k pi fine because the theta is zero in this case isn't it iota sine 2k pi fine okay so one is e raised to the power i 2k pi fine can you see that okay you got it so if i talk about one right to the power 11 so what we get we get e raised to the power i 2k pi Okay, divided by, you know, it's one by 11, right? So 2k pi, right? So one to the power 11. So I one by 11, we need to find. So 2k pi, okay, this is 11, fine. So you get e raised to the power i 2k pi. So how do you know they are the roots of unity? I mean, this is a question we have. See, uh, fine, eight pi, we have been given alpha is this, eight pi by 11 and, you know, cos plus iota sine eight pi really eleven, right? So that is, that is there, fine. So how can you know that this is the, you know, 11 roots of unity we have. So there may be, um, you know, we we may need to uh, remember the fact that, uh, see, 2 pi by 11 is there, right? Okay, this is there. So we need to, basically we are talking about, you know, 2 pi k because 1 by n is there. So let me, let me write, uh, uh, you know, k pi k plus whatever whatever we have plus theta let me let me write this way again let me write i think this will be the right explanation let me take cos zero right plus iota sine zero this is okay fine no problem one is cos 2k pi okay right plus iota sine 2k pi fine then one raised to the power one by eleven is cos 2k pi upon 11 plus iota sine 2k pi upon 11, right? So k, k, right, fine, k, if I put 1, what we get? We get cos 2 pi by 11, isn't it? If I put k is equal to, you know, say 4, so what we get? We get cos 8 pi by 11, right? I have to assign 8 pi. Can you see that? So this is one of the roots of unity. Is this clear? Arin? So obviously, uh, need to remember this. But again, how it is a cube root of unity, I have explained you. Fine? Right, Aryan? Right, Samaj? Mithun? So 8 pi by 11 is coming here, right? Okay. Now, uh, alpha is given in this, e raised to the power i 8 pi by 11, right? I have alpha to the power 10, real of e raised to the power I think this this is this is okay. Then I think that 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 part is okay now. I I suppose this is clear. Then I will go to the next part. So I, this part is clear, everyone. Fine. So we get k is equal to one. We get k is equal to four, right? Okay. So real of alpha and real of alpha to the power ten. Those given that they are equal. So. <clears throat> 
How can it be equal? You need to prove it. This is given in the solution, so we can just have a look at it. So I've given you the hint why it isn't, you know, some of the roots, some of, uh, you know, uh, why it is the 11th roots of unity and why why this is the unit of, you know, unity we have considered it, right? How alpha is equal to alpha 10 conjugate? I mean, this is a very interesting part. We have alpha is equal to e raised to the power i 8 pi by 11, right? Alpha 10 is e raised to the power, you know, 80 pi upon 11 beta, right, isn't it? Okay, so I think this is fine. Alpha is e raised to the power i 8 pi by 11. Alpha to the power 10 will be e to the power i 80 pi by 11, right? So which is nothing but cos 80 pi upon 11, right? Fine. And this is iota sine 80 pi upon 11, right? This is what is given. I think this is okay. Alpha to the power 10 is e raised to the power 80, right? I multiply. Because I, that power power will be multiplied. Fine. Okay. Now, can we, can we make it 8 pi because 80 divided by pi, 80 pi divided by 11 will be how much? Because we need 8 pi, right? So 11. We have alpha to the power 10. Alpha to the power 10 conjugate. So this comes out to be because we need to bring it in the form of cos 8 pi by 11 minus iota sine. Or we can write it as alpha to the power 10 can be written as alpha conjugate, right? Same way. Because we have to prove alpha is equal to alpha 10 conjugate. So alpha 10 is equal to alpha bar will be the same, right? This is there. That also we can do. Cos. Basically, if I divide 80 divided by 11, right, or eleven into eight minus eight, we can write yes, yes, okay, fine. Yes, we can write in this way. Fine. Right so much? So 88 minus 80 will be 88 minus 8 will be 80, right? So this can be written as cos, fine, 
okay 11 into 8 minus 8 divided by 11 and this is 5 fine plus iota sine again 11 into 8 my 11 minus 8 upon 11 is this okay i hope this is clear everyone fine right so it will come out as 8 pi minus 8 by 11 so obviously this will be the you know conjugate of this so this is coming out to be cos 8 pi upon 11 minus iota sine 8 pi upon 11 which is coming out to be e raised to the power minus iota 8 pi by 11 obviously this is nothing but the conjugate of alpha correct Yes, everyone, let me know if it is okay. Fine. So much. So I, now we can proceed. Yes, Mithun. Yes, Aryan. This is a very good discussion, you know. Those people who have left the class, maybe they have not done it, but you know. Once you go through complex numbers, this question Samaksh is asking is really appreciable. And I really appreciate the fact that, you know, um, uh, that he's studying, right? So you people too ask some doubts. You have, you should have some doubts, Peter, All right? Next class, make sure so have some doubts. <laughs> okay, Samaksh, is this clear now? Everyone, this is fine. Done. No other doubts. Yeah, function this this week the functions will be uploaded, beta. This will be uploaded. We'll start with the function. And we'll do the doubts of complex number also. Don't worry. Okay. Any other doubts? Anything you want to ask? You can ask me, Bache. Come on, let me know. All the doubts are clear now. Shall I give you one question? Very simple one. No. Okay, shall I give you some questions or is this okay? Okay, try one question, come on. Find the least positive integer. n such that 2i divided by 1 plus iota raised to the power n is a positive integer, right? You need to find the value of n. Come on, find it. Positive integer.
so much. Find the least positive integer n such that 2i upon 1 plus i raised to the power n is a positive integer. Options are 8, 6, 4, 9. Least positive integer such that 2i upon 1 plus i raised to the power n is a positive integer. And the value of n is 8, 6, 4, 9. Yeah. Any idea? Any one of you? Yes. You people trying this question or not? C option. Someone says sir, it's C. Any other students? Anyone? Mitten saying sir, give me one minute. I will say C option, sir. Okay. Option is C it. C option is correct. Okay. Karan, Aprajit, Samaksh, Parul, Bhavil, Mahesh, Nitya. Right. So I, I want everyone to go through this question. It's a very interesting question. The option is C, right? Option is C. I want everyone to go through it once. Okay. Will you? Everyone? Okay. Fine then, you go through it and the answer is actually C. Uh, answer is, uh, answer is coming out to be C, isn't it? I think answer is coming out to be, it's coming out to be eight better, eight, eight, sorry. No, it is eight. Okay, just have a look at it. It's eight. Let me confirm this question, right? Give me one minute. So this is eight. Eight is the answer. Eight is the answer. Okay, just try. This is a homework. 
and whatever the questions i have given you the hints and i have not completed i told you to complete just complete that fine and next uh, you know next class also we'll take some doubts of complex numbers plus we'll start with the function also okay we'll have function also fine right okay then so nice uh, interacting with you people really appreciable just one thing give the test properly one of a don't let leave any any test okay just give the test we have taken around 12 tests till day or we'll be taking so please go through it if you don't give the test then how will you you know come out with the negatives that what you have done wrong and what are the need of need of you know scope of improvement is there right so need to work on that okay then bye take care and god bless you bye bye take care